a seance has been held on the set of dusty old movies, sending one Bobby back to the year 1795 and into a sea of familiar faces. Barnabas, I'm so glad to see you. I guess I got lost in the woods. Forgive me, young lady, but I don't believe we've had the pleasure of meeting before. I don't know what kind of game you're playing, Barnabas, but I'm Victoria Winters and you know it. I'm not playing a game. The fact is, I've never seen you before in my life. I, I, I don't understand. Hi, I'm Bobby and welcome to Dusty Old Movies. I actually met Jonathan Fridge who played Barnabas on Dark Shadows. It was a few years ago at a Dark Shadows convention. Jonathan, who was 84, hadn't been to a convention in 10 years, but he was going to this one. He must have heard I was going. And everyone there was wondering, what's it going to be like? And what's it going to look like? And we were all in the convention room, and the announcer said, Ladies and gentlemen, we present Mr. Jonathan Frid. And everyone went crazy. They were all clapping and cheering. And Jonathan came in, all hunched over with a cane. And he got on stage, and he started dancing and hurling the cane in the air. It was like Willy Wonka. And as he discussed Barnabas, I realized all the many aspects there are to that character. And the storyline that highlights it the most is the 1795 storyline, which are episodes 365 to 461, and for the DVDs are volume 4 through volume 7. So let's take a dark and shadowy look at the Barnabas origin story. For the first year, Dark Shadows was just a little low-rated soap opera, but with the introduction of the 200-year-old vampire Barnabas Collins, the show became a phenomena. Barnabas became the new star. <laughs> I'm ready for my typo, Mr. DeMille. <laughs> but creator-producer Dan Curtis and the writers now faced a new and daunting challenge. How do you bring a vampire back every day? And they were running out of ideas. Then Dan had it and said, People have got to be wondering how he became a vampire. Let's go back in time and show it, and it could be a whole new story. Dan's idea was that there would be a seance at Collinwood, as usual, and the governess, Victoria Winters, would switch places with the governess of 1795 and get involved in the drama of all these new characters. When it came to casting, Barnabas and Vicky were no problem. Then when it came to who would play Barnabas's lost love, Josette Dupre, Dan Curtis decided since Catherine Lee Scott, who normally played Maggie Evans, had played the ghost of Josette Moir in a few episodes, that it would only make sense for her to play the living Josette. And since she was playing another character, why not have the entire Dark Shadows cast play new characters? So that's what they did. Grayson Hall, who normally played Dr. Julia Hoffman, was now Countess Dupre. Joe Crawlers, who played Boy Next Door, Joe Haskell, was now the CAD, Lieutenant Forbes. And Louis Edmonds, who played Roger Collins, was now Joshua Collins, the stern head of the family. With period costumes and a little bit of set redressing, the whole Dark Shadows gang were ready to do the first horror period piece ever done on daytime TV. There has been a seance at Collinwood, and Victoria Winters has somehow been thrust back to the year 1795. Although puzzled by her strange appearance and demeanor, the Collins family hire her on as a governess to Sarah Collins. Meanwhile, Barnabas has been expecting the arrival of his fiancée, Josette Dupre. However, her maid, Angelique, is not only in love with Barnabas, but also a witch! and she casts a spell so that Josette and Barnabas's uncle Jeremiah will fall in love and get married. Barnabas is enraged and kills Jeremiah in a duel. Several members of the household blame these strange events on Vicky and believe that she's a witch, and witch hunter Reverend Trask is called in to exorcise her. Angelique tricks Barnabas into marrying her, but when he discovers that she's the witch, he tries to kill her. In revenge, Angelique turns him into a vampire, while Barnabas faces an eternity of darkness, Vicky faces a hangman's noose. I love this story. It's spooky and suspenseful, like you want from Dark Shadows. But at times, it's also emotionally moving. 
In the present day storyline, we pretty much know the main characters aren't going to be killed off. But here, no one is safe. And a lot of them bite the dust. <coughs> Two puns for one sentence. Yes! So there's a level of unpredictability to the story that keeps you guessing. But at the same time, there are also these key events, like Barnabas becoming a vampire, that you know are going to happen. And the suspense is in the anticipation. For example, we know from previous stories that Josette is going to jump off Widow's Hill. Barnabas even did a monologue about it. But here we finally get to see it. And as it approaches and we see signs of it, the suspense builds because we know it's coming, but we don't exactly know how and we want to see. Look into the future, Josette, and see how you will change and see what Barnabas will do to you. No, no, take it away, take it away. Josette, are you all right? No, stay where you are. Don't come near me. I don't want to become what you are. I died before I let that happen. <laughs> Josette, Josette, Josette. It's exciting and spooky with Josette's scary vision and her getting closer and closer to the edge of the cliff. But there's also something touching about it. When Barnabas yells, Josette! He has just lost the love of his life and will never be the same again. And it really gets you right here. There are other scenes like that too, like when he's with his emotionally distant father, Joshua, or with his sister, Sarah, whom he loves so much. There are relatable and about real human relationships, and they really have an emotional impact. The spookiness combined with real emotion is what gives the storyline its power as do its fabulous villains. This story has three iconic Dark Shadows villains in it, and it focuses on the transformation of Barnabas Collins from a young and romantic man in his 20s, like yours truly, into a vampire! Jonathan was already in his 40s, but he does a good job of playing a more innocent and more emotional Barnabas, who's just over the moon with Josette. Then when Jeremiah marries her, he kills him in a duel. Then later he tries to kill Angelique. So he's already spilt blood. Ah, I hate it when that happens. And felt extreme hatred and loss before he even becomes a vampire. And then after he becomes one, it's just intensified and he has more of an outlet for it. So when he's killing his enemies, he just relishes showing off his superpowers, and he goes from despair over the situation into murder mode within a matter of seconds. <laughs> Why should anyone live when she is dead? My rage will burst these walls! My agony will crumble these stones! Destruction is what I want! Destruction! Death! Blood! I want to see her again! I want to look upon her one last time. Jonathan is spooky and touching, and it's easy to see how this Barnabas would mature into Mr. Vampire of 1967. And part of the fun in watching him is his love-hate relationship with Angelique, played by the beautiful and wily Laura Parker. Angelique is a witch from Martinique, and Laura plays her with such evil and intensity, it's truly frightening. But it's also fun because she doesn't care who she hurts or kills to get what she wants. Bang. Oh. You didn't do the job well enough, Barnabas. I'm not dead yet. And while I'm still breathing, I shall have my revenge. I set the curse upon you, Barnabas Collins. You wanted your precious little Josette so much where you shall have her. But not in the way you would have chosen. You will never rest, Barnabas. And you will never love. Whoever loves you shall die. That is my curse, and you shall live with it throughout all eternity. Laura was so convincing in this role that she used to receive phone calls saying, You're in danger of losing your life if you don't stop torturing Barnabas. <laughs> I hope I'm not Facebook friends with that guy. Anyway, upon rewatching this story, I also noticed a sympathetic side to her performance because she genuinely loves Barnabas and just wants him to love her too. Along with the witch, the third main villain of the story is the witch hunter, Reverend Trask, played by Jerry Lacey. Reverend Trask cannot tell a witch from a hot dog. She's a witch! You can tell by her onions! 
She's a witch. You can tell by her onions. But what makes him fascinating is that he believes he can. He really believes in his exorcism powers and that Vicky's a witch. But in an ends justify the means way, he uses bribery and bullying to try to get Vicky on the gallows. Jerry Lacey really makes his subplot exciting because he plays it with such conviction and you sympathize so much with Vicky because you just want her to escape from him. Victoria Winters! Victoria Winters! The powers of light have come to do battle with the powers of darkness! Your destruction is at hand! Cross this threshold and come from darkness into light! All three of these villains are creepy, but there's also something genuinely human about them that gives them a deeper impact. Along with the villains making the story engaging, so does its historical aspect. The story is set in 1795 and they integrate aspects of that time period into the story. Reverend Trask is a witch hunter, so that it has a bit of a Salem's witch trial aspect to it. After Barnabas is attacked by a bat, people are concerned he has the plague. And they even explain that the secret room in the family mausoleum was built to store ammunition during the American Revolution, and that Joshua Collins, Barnabas' father, actually fought in the war. We serve tea so seldom in this house. Joshua considers it a sign of British authority. It's not exactly the History Channel, especially since the Salem witch trials occurred 100 years earlier, but close enough. And those little touches go a long way in making it really feel like 1795. And because you're able to believe that, it gives the horror and the drama more of a reality, which makes it more exciting. Overall, I adore this story. It's spooky and engaging, and it is really the heart of Dark Shadows, establishing both the Barnabas, <laughs> Josette, and Angelique Love Triangle, and the practice of having the actors play multiple roles. And I give it four exorcisms out of four. Thank you for watching Dusty Old Movies, and have a bewitching day!